In this video, we're going to talk about how to use implicit differentiation. So in this example, what we want to do is use implicit differentiation to find the derivative dy dx. And the function is x squared plus x times y plus y squared equals 1. So what we're going to do is to take the derivative of the left-hand side, and then we're going to set that equal to the derivative of the right-hand side. And the one thing is, is that um, you have to make sure that you understand is that whenever you take the derivative of something involving a y, right, um, we're going to have to um, multiply by dy dx. And, and the reason why you have to do that, right, is because of the chain rule. y is taking the place of some more complicated formula um, that involves x. We just don't really know what it is at this point. All right, so here we go. Uh, to take the derivative uh, over here on the left hand side what we have are three functions being added together so i'm just going to take the derivative of x squared uh, and that's just the, you know the power rule and so the derivative of x squared is 2x all right and then i would put a plus just like here okay and now this middle part right here is uh, slightly tricky right i have x and it's being multiplied times y so whenever you have two things being multiplied together, right, and you want to take their derivative, what you need to do is use the product rule, okay? So the product rule says take the derivative of one of those things. So I'm going to take the derivative of x, and the derivative of x is just 1. And then the product rule says to leave the other um, part alone. So it would be 1 times y, okay? So that's half of the product rule. The product rule says then put a plus okay and then the one that you took the derivative of last time which was the x just rewrite that so I'd have an x right here okay and then now uh, the one that we left alone the first round of the product rule which was the y what we want to do is take its derivative so the derivative of y is going to be 1 but remember we just took the derivative of something involving y so to complete that we have to multiply by the derivative of y right which is dy dx okay and uh, the reason again for that is because well y is taking the place of some more complicated formula that we don't know what it is at this minute so we just put this symbol here dy dx to show that we've completed that um, derivative All right next we're going to put a plus and then we're going to take the derivative of y squared so the derivative of y squared would be 2y right and remember why there's it's covering up some more complicated formula and we just took the derivative of um, something involving y right so we would also have to multiply here by dy dx and that really corresponds to the third part of the chain rule right whatever y is whatever that formula is that we don't really know right we would multiply by its derivative to complete the chain rule so uh, probably the trickiest part for most people on this one is the x times y, forgetting to use the product rule, right? The, all this stuff right here is the derivative of that x, y. And so that's the product rule there. Okay, so that wraps up the derivative of the left-hand side. We're going to put the equal sign. The derivative of the right-hand side is just going to be 0 um, because the derivative of a constant by itself is just 0. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to clean it up a little bit and carry out some of these multiplications. 1 times y is just y. x times 1 is just x. Okay, and so that's what we've got. So now what you want to do, you're done taking the derivative, but what you need to do in this problem, because they want to find dy dx, is that you need to solve algebraically for dy dx. Okay, uh, it might look a little difficult, but really it's not too bad. What you want to do is get all of the terms, right? Terms are things separated by addition or subtraction. You want to get all the terms that have the dy dx on one side of the equal sign and all the terms that don't have the dy dx on the other side of the equal sign. So uh, there's plenty of different ways that you can do that. But first, what you want to do is add or subtract the terms from either side. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and I'm going to subtract y from both sides. And when I do that, that's what I'll end up with. Over on the left side, I'll have the x dy dx plus the 2y dy dx here. And then when I subtracted 2x from both sides, it canceled out here. And 0 uh, minus 2x will be minus 2x. When I subtracted y from the left side, that cancels out, right? And uh, when I subtracted it from over here, I got minus y. 
So now what I've got is that every term over here on the left hand side has a dy dx, right? And every term that doesn't have a dy dx is over on the right side. And so that's exactly how I want it. And, and the reason um, why I want all the dy dx terms on one side is so that I can factor out the dy dx. So just like if this were some other variable like a z or something like that, you could factor it out. You just factor out the dy dx from both sides, okay? And so that's what I would have. So the very last step now is to divide both sides by x plus 2y. Okay, and that will get dy dx by itself on one side over here. And then over on the left side, I'll have minus 2x minus y over x plus 2y. Um, sometimes, um, the, you, you know, you might factor that negative sign out and put it out front. Um, uh, you, you don't really have to here, um, but, um, you know, on some of the multiple choice questions, you might have to match, you know, your answer to the answer uh, by doing something like that.